Aloha and welcome to this really brief screencast about testing in the context of play applications. And I want to say that this is going to be a very idiosyncratic look at how to test play applications because I'm giving you a, a simplified approach to testing that I think is well suited to the style of development that we're pursuing in this class, which is mainly um, kind of an outside-in development approach where the user interface is being developed kind of first and then the underlying machinery is being added to to uh, to uh, you know provide the back end to that behavior and also um, a style of development where we're focusing on early stage applications where we're not worried about um, you know immense forms of scalability and and so forth um, there's a lot of different ways you can do you can do testing um, and I guess this is also kind of oriented towards the development environment that we're using um, where Eclipse doesn't provide good support for the play application development uh, in a test driven design style which is a, a very nice style and I'm not I'm not uh, don't I'm not I'm trying to apply by not using test driven design that that's not a good approach it's just that this is the approach I think is going to work kind of the best for you as a, a bootstrapping mechanism and you can always add in other kinds of testing approaches uh, later on. Also, this approach does not deal with uh, performance testing where you're trying to see what kind of load levels your application can handle. That's an important thing to do even in an early stage situation, but that's kind of a separate, almost a separate species of testing that has entirely different tools and, and um, associated with it. So we'll have to deal with that in another module. Okay, um, so assuming that you know our user interface is going to be developed kind of in parallel with the back end so that we can always access any behavior that we're interested in from the user interface, we're going to take this approach where we actually use the user interface in order to implement testing. What that means using kind of you know testing terminology is that we're using integration tests where uh, we won't take one little package or one little class in the system and develop a set of tests to make sure that that specific class works correctly. That's a unit testing style. Um, Test-driven design often you know, takes that approach to things. We're going to focus on a kind of a more global level of testing where we'll write tests that basically kind of bring up the user interface and click on buttons and, and navigate to different pages and so forth and, and test the, the, the system that way. The, the advantages of this approach is that you really do get a, a fair amount of coverage of the code, uh, you know, the application base with relatively um, little testing code because you know when you're when you're testing through the user interface you're exercising a lot of application code for every line of testing code so that's that has a nice property which means that that as your system evolves over time you, you'll spend less time kind of rewriting and and maintaining your your test code you know the test code will will remain a fairly small percentage of your code base on the other hand it makes it somewhat harder it can make it harder to uh, kind of diagnose when a prop, when a test goes bad where it was exactly in the code that that things broke. So that's a that's a downside. Again, there's trade-offs. You know, every approach has certain pros and cons, and 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 this approach is is no different. Um, although you know, I want to say as a caveat for the caveat is that that uh, we will mock the database. Uh, we'll have an in-memory database for these applications. Um, so what we're going to do is basically access the user interface, manipulate web pages, um, and the style that I want you to think about when you're f figuring out what to write a test case about is think about some kind of use case. You know, the user is going to go in and do X, Y, Z, A, B, and C. We'll write a test case that actually kind of simulates that particular behavior. Um, and if you think in those terms, you're likely to come up with cases, test cases that actually you know, explore the most of the nooks and crannies of your system. Okay, so here's some concrete guidelines, uh, you know, kind of more stylistic guidelines. You want to create a test directory inside the test directory. That's so that the test code itself is inside a package. Um, your, if you find an application test.java file in your test directory because Play creates them by default, you can simply delete that one. Pretty crazy, but delete it because the code inside there illustrates unit level testing and, and we're not going to be doing that. Definitely want you to implement the page object pattern because we're doing this UI based stuff. Um, this is the, 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 the way that yields the maximal amount of reusable code and the, and the nice, most nicely readable test cases. 
Um, so there's no reason to never not use it. And I would create a sub-package called Pages where, where you put the, um, the class corresponding to the behavior associated with each page. And then, you know, JUnit, which will be using the at test, will be using the JUnit framework, but instead of using the JUnit assertion methods, I want you to use Fest assertions, which is basically a single assertion method called assert that, where you put, you know, some um, expression inside the assert that, and then you chain a bunch of predicates on the, you know, after that method in order to, to figure out whether whatever that object or, you know, that, that expression that you put in there satisfies all the, the conditions that you want. So here's an example assert that foo is in the collection bar and that foo is greater than baz. So there's an implicit and there. And that leads to a very readable um, uh, you know, uh, assertion um, that uh, you know, when, the, when, J -Unit, when it fails, it gets, it gets the failure it gets printed out in a way that you can understand what happens. Um, and with assertion methods, you know, you sometimes switch the order of arguments and it's, you have these comments in it to try to figure out what's going on. And, and um, I just find that this is a, a pretty simple way to, an easier way to do testing, quite frankly, than the JUnit assertions. So um, let's use that. Uh, as I said before, we're going to write each test to implement a use case. Uh, in order to use this fest assert, it's, it's provided with the play framework library. So you just do this import statement to get it. And then to support this kind of end-to-end -end testing the user in interface, we're going to use this package called Fluent Lenium. Again, it comes for free with Play, so you don't have to do any special configuration. Um, and I suggest you look at Play Example Form and the Fluent Lenium docs for examples. Um, let's take a quick look at that. Oh, sure, save it. Um, so here we are at Play Example Form. This is the test called View Test. This would normally be called Integration Test. Um, in your code. You can see that we do this import static right here to get the assert that. And um, they all pretty much have this standard format of, of uh, you know, you have to document with at test, that's the J unit thing. And then there's this running uh, thing where you give this test port, you have this fake application with an in-memory database called HTML unit and so forth. Um, and you get uh, the um, and then you have to override this invoke method, and then inside there, that's where all your test code goes. So the, the only thing that's changing in this are these uh, pieces right here. Okay, and uh, each of these, you know, more or less implements kind of a use case. Okay, and, and if you read through it, you can see it's it's pretty obvious. We're gonna we get we create this index page object thingy. We're gonna go to the index page and we check that we're there, and then we set the name. You know, set all these things, and then we click the submit button. So it's very easy to read these test cases and understand what's going on. And the reason why they're so readable is, come on, give me a break. Um, okay, the reason why they're so readable is that if we go to the pages directory, what we've implemented is this index page object that extends fluent page which provides all the behavior associated with that page. So if you think about your use cases, you know, you're going to navigate maybe through the login page a bunch of times in different tests. And so by creating a page called login page that provides all the behavior with it, it makes it, you know, this code can be reused in a lot of different specific use cases uh, in a very easy fashion. All right, so this is just a natural, simple, uh, yet elegant way to um, organize all of your test code. Now the other thing that's going to happen here um, in uh, when you're working with uh, Twitter Bootstrap and Fluent Lenium is you're going to run into this issue with uh, jQuery. And um, so the way that you're going to solve it is basically you need to um, provide an ability to uh, import a late version, uh, you know, a modern version of Bootstrap like 3.0 but an older version of jQuery. And this is mentioned when you go through the documentation for this play example form, we, I talk about this, but I'm just, since I'm thinking of it, I'm just going to remind you that it's important to make sure that you edit your build.sbt to um, have this particular style. This will enable the HTML unit um, simulator to, to, to work well with Fluent Lenium. So if you get some crazy um, tests that don't, don't 
Uh, they start up, but they never end. It's probably because you've forgotten to downgrade jQuery to 1.8.3. Okay. All right. Well, I hope that gets you started writing test cases. Testing is a wonderful thing. I don't know what we do without it. Um, and uh, you know, enjoy. <laughs>